So today, the guys are getting ready to start pre-fitting the AMD sheet metal on our Superbird. So far, we've gotten all of the old sheet metal off, such as the floor, the outer wheelhouses, the quarter panels, the rear body panel, etc. After that's done, the guys have to start cleaning stuff up in preparation for these new panels. And that's what I want to show you today. So what you see back here is the pile of the sheet metal that came off of our Superbird. This is, <laughs> when you cut it into strips, this is what it looks like. But basically, everything that came off the car from the upper cow panel, uh, the rear body panel, the trunk floor, trunk floor extensions, the interior cabin floor, the step well floor, but this is what you got once you have all the pieces off. We don't throw anything away in the event that there's a bracket that might need to be transferred or we might need some kind of an idea of how the factory did something. We just keep it over here in a pile until we're done putting the car together. So once you have your old sheet metal off, we know we have the car dipped. We know we have our new products from AMD waiting to go on, the new quarter panels, new trunk floor. We have our new interior floor over there. We have our roof skin down there. It's not just a matter of taking the new sheet metal, throwing it in and you start welding. You want to pre-fit everything. And so that's what the guys are doing today. They're, they've made some preparations, if you look in here, just to acclimate you with what you're looking at. This once had an original floor pan in it. That original floor pan welded to, this is what you never see, the front frame rail. This is the torsion bar cross member that oftentimes is rotted out. But this car actually, structurally speaking, such as this, and the torsion bar cross member. These are the original seat mount reinforcements. They're really solid. All of the inner structure stuff was solid. It was just the sheet metal that was bad. So what you see on here is that they've ground it. Like through here, you can see where they ground all of the old spot welds off. They drilled them out one at a time, removed the panel. Whatever was left, they ground smooth. This is a weld through primer, this goldish stuff. Now, you'll see some small holes. That's because they've had the panel in and out several times pre-fitting it. Once the panel is in this car, screwed down to the cross member and the side rails, the cowl, the front frame rails, the seat reinforcement brackets, the rear pan, once it's screwed down into place, they'll start doing their spot welding once they know it's where it's supposed to be. But where we're catching them right now is, guys, you can go ahead and put that in. They are getting ready to install the new center floor pan. And as they bring that over, you'll see that the areas that are gonna go against here and here those patterns, they have that gold weld through primer on them as well. The main reason for the weld through primer is that it uh, is designed to burn back and let two pieces of metal touch and fuse and melt together. And then that gold uh, primer, that gold uh, coating will fall back over the weld and actually protect the weld. Whereas a regular primer, if you were to weld two pieces of metal, it would just blow away and then you'd have raw metal where the two pieces of metal met. This will actually concave back in and seal around the weld. A good welder, he'll always use a weld through primer. Some are zinc, some are copper. This one's a copper one. We have our best luck with the copper. Um, but you should do it. You should never weld two pieces of metal together unless you can get on both sides of it. In this case, we can't get on both sides of it. We can't get in between a seat floor reinforcement and the actual floor pan. It's, it's invisible to us at that point. We need something that will, will react that way. And that's what the copper weld through or the zinc weld through primer is for. It's starting to look like a floor now, that big one piece. This, again, is the new Auto Metal Direct floor. It's an exact duplication of the factory one with all the factory provisions, including the drains, the hump for the shifter, all of the strength ribs. So you see them working there. It's sheet metal, and it's a big piece. So there is, it's, it's not just plug and play. It takes craftsmen that have been down that road before to make the metal fit the floor to fit the cowl. So even though it's been in and out and they pre-fit it, they're gonna continue to work on making sure that it's exactly where the factory piece went before they start screwing it down and move to the next panels. So they've got their all in place over here. They've got their pre-drilled holes set up over there. What the guys are gonna start doing now is they're gonna start putting in their self-tapping sheet metal screws. That's gonna do two things. It's gonna keep the pan from being able to move as well as when you do spot welding like the factory, and we'll talk about that in a minute, the two panels, the new floor, the old one, they can't have a gap. Otherwise, all you're doing is spot welding the top one, and it's not molten together with the bottom one. Those two have to be tight. Well, you can't put a pair of, nobody makes a five foot pair of vice grips that you could go in from here and vice grip that together with. Make sense? 
So what you want to do is you want to be able to suck those two panels together and a screw will do that. So what he's doing and what we're doing at Graveyard Cars is we're duplicating the assembly line process, but with today's technology and today's equipment, which is better as everything has evolved, so the cars that started to rust after four or five years in the beginning and were completely rotted out after 10 or 15 years in some cases, will be around for generations to come with our new process, with our new techniques, using the old style as a pattern. Station, this station, 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 station,